Hey, Bunky, it's Weston. Hey, Weston, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing really good. I just want to come and tell you, hey, I appreciate how you uh, conducted yourself on night to counsel me with Richie. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's not too easy when, when I'm the only person, but somebody had to I ask know, those questions. And, 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 and Kim feels the same way. She just wants to speak up. I don't, I don't know what's going on with it, but but I call to tell you, watch out for Richie now because he's got a file building on you. And that's the way he operates. Uh, what do you mean exactly? Well, he's, I don't know if you know it, but he, in his office, he's got uh, software to do a background on anybody and everybody, which is illegal as everything, and Dubo's raised almighty cane about it. Mm -hmm. But he can do a background on anybody, and he has a folder on each one of the council members and every department head, and he keeps up with that folder. Now, I know that for a fact because I was on the inside for so long. Right. And I know how he operates now. So his goal now is after you, and he's been after Kevin Locke, and he knew who Kevin was. The whole time you was questioning him, and he was at like a, a dumb butt that he didn't know who you was talking about. Right. Yeah. But Kevin is a landscape architect. He just don't like Kevin because he employ council stuff. Right. And I had Kevin at community development, and he ordered me to move him to Poker Works. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little familiar with that situation. Not, not, yeah. not too many of the details, but at least... Um, you know, the gist of it, but, hmm, I, yeah, it's funny because literally at least four council members, more or less, are on the same page or feel the same way, but then it's, it, no one's really standing up to say anything. Well, R Richie, Richie just, that's the way he works. I mean, uh, that's just the way he works, and you, you're going to have little things happen to you, and you can just turn around and say, Richie's getting me. He's out, he's out after me. But his goal right now is to get stuff on you so you can't win the next election. Oh, that's a long way away. Uh oh, he's still working on it. Now, I'm telling you, that's the way Richie works. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Um, well, I guess what would you advise, if anything, moving forward? Because I'm going to continue the same thing, just asking these questions to catch them in lies, because it, it's it's too easy at this point. It's just a matter of. Um, asking the right questions, I feel like. Well, Richie's the reason I'm gone. I mean, I wasn't planning on leaving, nothing like that. And then Richie got into <coughs> it, and then the mayor just, just said, that's it, Bunk, you can't get along with Richie, and you need to go. And I'm like, listen, I've been here 42 years, and Richie's been here five years, and mm -hmm. he don't know half of what he thinks he knows. Yeah. And, I mean, you got problems with, with Justin Campbell, who is... is the mayor's personal assistant, who is really Richie's personal assistant, who drives a city vehicle every day. He's part-time now. He drives a city vehicle every day to Collinsville and mm -hmm. brings his kids to Highland Baptist Church every morning in daycare. And he's part-time, and he's in the city vehicle. Right. And I just, I hadn't understood that yet. Yeah, there's a lot not of that. Not civil service, not nothing. Yeah. There's and then lot. you got twin, and you know what's all happening with twin. Yeah, more or less. I'm about painting my vehicle. Spent seven thousand dollars <laughs> to paint that vehicle black instead of white. Yeah, I heard it was like ten, ten thousand. Well, may may have been guy who The guy who took it to the body shop called and said, "You ain't gonna believe it." He said, "But they're painting your vehicle black instead of white, and that's costing seven thousand dollars." Wow. But, yeah. But Richie had to sign off on the PO, and then y'all had to pr approve it on the claims doc. Yeah. Well. And you, and you know Twins about $10,000 out of his pay range. Yeah, I'm aware. And he don't do one bit of inspection, and they called him a code, a, a code enforcement officer, and he don't do one thing with them. Right. You need to walk into Union Station and kind of look at them offices down there, how plush they are. You wouldn't believe them. I've heard. I just haven't, I guess, been bold enough to walk down there and look just yet. I think I will, you just though. Need to we just need to walk in there and see it. And I see all the stuff that Twins got in his office and Justin got in his. And huh. it, it's unbelievable that city employees who are just down the totem pole can have offices like that. Right. I mean, it's just just little things like that goes on. And I can tell you a bunch more. But, you know, I've got an EEOC complaint against the city right now, against Richie. What's that? Well, when Richie threatened, Richie told me 
three times in one day that he was going to get my ass for the day was up to my face with Kim Houston standing on the corner. Mm-hmm. And the next morning he calls David Whitaker in and tells David Whitaker he's going to get my ass for the day's up. So I met with the mayor and told the mayor, I said, mayor, I'm not listening to Richie up in my face doing this. And I said, I'll, I'm going to file an EEOC complaint, but I'm not going to go through Stacy. And you know the reasons I'm not going through Stacy. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to handle it. And he, the whole time, he just kept telling me he was investigating it. And he never did anything. Yeah. So, <coughs> well, but it, just watch out for Rich. I mean, yeah. I'm telling you, he is. He will. He, he showed me how he can do texts on people's phone. Like, come from your phone to somebody else and you never did it but he can make it happen he has showed me how he can do that really some type of software huh yes but he's very talented at that kind of stuff yeah now if Hmm. you see his vehicle at city hall usually on friday afternoons and it's there all night friday night Mm -hmm. i mean he got drunk at city hall or over bruce's office Mm -hmm. and he couldn't drive home and he walked home yeah and you know lolo's got the video of him that's how come they Treating Lolo so good. I knew there was a video. I just didn't know who had it. Lolo's got the video. That's how come they laid off everybody but Lolo. Yeah. Well, I, I knew... She's got, she's got Richie by the balls. Yeah. Okay. Is there... I mean... Like, I'm, I'm aware of the types of tactics he uses and, and you know, more, more or less everything you're saying, but is there... Is there any way to really combat you know, these types of things that he's going to be doing. No, he's very slick. He's very slick with it. You just have to be careful with him. He's, he's real slick with the way he does stuff. Mm-hmm. Him and Magruder are real tight. Now, he tried to get Magruder for a long time, and then the mayor wouldn't let that happen because he said he's going to protect his black people. Yeah. So Magruder is the one tight to, to Percy now, but Richie don't want nobody to listen to Percy except him. So he, he's he's working away from Magruder. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the black ministers have come to me. Ricky Hood has come to me. Yeah. And all said that Percy told me he was going to do something with Richie before he got elected, and he never did. Yeah, it's a problem. And, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, it's hard to really know what to do in the early days, uh, you know, the early months, really when you're newly mm-hmm. elected and to this day I, I think that's probably the biggest mistake I've made is um, you know securing his his spot as CAO mm-hmm. unfortunately but that's that's already done so yeah but you, you didn't George was pushing him and him and George are tight and they tell each other stuff and mm-hmm. they have coffee every morning together at City Hall so but George ain't always gonna be president I'm hoping that would change and I'm hoping you'll step up to vice president, Fanny, be president. Something like that. I think that's, I think that's the direction it's heading. Yeah, and I hope Tyrone will start speaking up a little bit more. Yeah, he's in a tough spot because Lolo and that whole dynamic and his voters, mm-hmm. you know, they're not really uh, of you know like a high enough voter IQ to even see what's going on, even if someone explains it. You're exactly right. So it's a tough You're spot. Exactly right. But I'm telling you, Ricky Hood, the black ministers are all against Richie, and it's taking everything Percy can do. Mm-hmm. And you know, they quit having staff meetings down at the police department. They have them at City Hall now because Percy says, Richie says something stupid down at the police department, and we're just going to keep it up here at City Hall when he says something stupid. Wow. Yeah. But, but, but he's Percy's little bulldog, mm-hmm. and that's what the business community, well, not the business, Bob Luke, yeah. uh, Bruce Martin, and um, EBDC got a bill. They mm-hmm. all like Richie. Arch right. McDonald's pulling away from him a little bit because he's too much of a bulldog. Yeah. So, are there any like allies maybe that I'm not aware of? Um. No, no, not this time. It's not. I just I feel like a lot of people either. Are starting to come out and you know like you're saying the black ministers are you know mentioning all these problems and I, I feel like there's a lot of people like that and so I'm I'm kind of in a spot where I'm trying to think okay who have I not even reached out to 
that could help at this point because I, I'm aware of things like you know the issue with the master plan and whether or not it, it's even real um, and so that was part of my questioning at the last council meeting as well and that's some of Bob Luke stuff now let, let, me, let me tell you the truth on um, Crossroads 2 Richie gets on the radio show and say Crossroads 2 is coming Mm -hmm. They done staked it out. They just, y'all don't have the money to do uh, the TIFF. Well, I talked, Wesley Walls and I are really friends, and Wesley calls me about once every couple of weeks. And I said, Yeah, Wesley, I heard that y'all were coming to Meridian. He said, No, Bunker, we are not coming. I said, Well, the CAO made an announcement this morning you're coming. He said, We are not coming. He said, Percy has not called me back. Percy used me during a political season, and I ain't heard a <coughs> word from him since. We're not bringing Hobby Lobby, Dick Sporting Goods, and all that in here. He said, if Murdy Star calls me, he said, I'm going to tell him exactly what Percy did to us. Mm -hmm. And that's what Wesley Walls told me. Okay. So Richie can, Richie can get up there all he wants and say it's coming, but it's not coming. Yeah. But they, he don't like dealing with Richie, but he don't really know Richie, you know. Right. The employees, just look how many complaints. I don't know if you, if y'all know how many EEOC complaints are going on right now. Not a I clue. Uh, how would I find that out? I mean, human resources, obviously, but. Well, they, they probably won't tell you. Yeah, that's Y'all won't get it until it, you know, a settlement comes or something like that. Hmm. But I, I know of two right now and possibly three. But, but Richie's saying is he. He made a statement to somebody, it don't bother him at all. You sue all you want because he's not going to be around when it all settles. Well, and he won't settle. They're trying to settle right now with the deputy police chief, assistant police chief, Sharp. Yeah. The insurance company told Richie to settle for 200000 and Richie said, absolutely not. So they got him a problem more twiddling his thumbs out there not doing anything. Mm -hmm. But Richie won't settle. Yeah, there's a. Nah. I think there's a few of those out there similar to that. Oh yeah, that Richie yeah. just won't do it because he's hard headed and he won't do it. Yeah. What so what's the deal with the employee council? I know that the audit that was occurring, I had heard that, that was that was Richie's doing. Richie did that when we first went in the office, when Percy first went in the office. Richie pushed it and pushed it and pushed it, then found out that it was illegal for them to be paying them so much a month to be on the employee council. Mm-hmm. So once they found out, then the state auditor come in here and said, okay, since this is illegal, every council member and the mayor and all have got to pay back this money to the city of Meridian. So it's been real quiet ever since then because George says he ain't paying it. Barbara Henson said they ain't paying it. Mm -hmm. So Richie's kind of kept it real quiet now and not pushing it. Right. But Kevin was the president of the employee council this whole time, and Richie's been after him. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Big time. Big time. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, it's, and Laura, bless her heart, she's kind of in the middle of all of it. Yeah. But they go end up throwing her to the wolves, too. You watch to see what happens. But you know how tight man Percy was during the campaign. Right. I mean, and then all of a sudden he tells me, I got to go because I can't get along with Richie. I said, okay, that's all right. Well, I imagine it's for the exact reason you were saying with you know, the people that Richie are, is connected to, they're going to keep him in there as long as they can to do their bidding. Mm-hmm. Yep, you're exactly right. And if the mayor's just going to look the other way, that, he probably sees that as just the easier way of doing it than, you know, going head-to-head. -head. Well, Richie's catching all the bullets and the mayor ain't catching any of them. Yeah. You notice during the council meetings, Percy ain't saying a whole lot. It's Richie up there. Right. So he's throwing Rich out there, and Richie's, Richie is, you know, they, he can get rid of him, no problem. Mm -hmm. He don't have to get up and argue with y'all. He's throwing Rich out there, and Rich ain't smart enough to figure that out. That's but true. he's letting Richie run all Meridian, making all the decisions. You go to City Hall and say how long Percy stays at City Hall. Oh, I know. He's not there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the same time, though, when it comes to those questions that I'll ask at council meetings, I mean, I can actually, you know, ask for the mayor to answer specifically, mm -hmm. that's probably a better strategy, wouldn't you think, than to have uh, to then to have Richie take all the bullets because then 
you know, if the mayor's taking the heat, he's not going to like that too much. Well, I'm a, as long as you keep throwing bullets at Richie, though, Richie ain't going to last much longer because Percy can't afford it. With the black community going against Richie right now, mm-hmm. I mean, Ricky Hood especially. You know, Ricky Hood is strong in the black community. Yeah. He cannot stand Richie. He cannot stand it. Now, Richie had something on Magruder, too, something about he embezzled money at Kosciuszko Boys and Girls Club and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. But see, me and, Rich, me and Richie would sit down and talk about all this stuff, what he had on everybody. And Dubose was a drunk, and he had how many times he went to the liquor store. And, <laughs> wow. I mean, that's yeah. just the way Richie works. Right. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, I imagine, like you say, just keep throwing bullets at Richie, and he'll be out you know, within a matter of time. But at the same time, I wonder if he's going to, you know, resort to his intimidation tactics as a response to that, you know, before an election. Yeah, he will. He will. Yeah. He definitely will. But I guarantee you, he, they, he done had a little talk with Justin and Twin, and they're probably following you around a little bit, find out what's going on, checking your phone calls, definitely checking your emails. You know, he always checks everybody's emails. Yeah, city emails. I know that. Oh. Oh, yeah, he does that every day, and he has data processing doing that every day. Mm-hmm. So how would he and check phone calls, don't trust, Do I? How would he check phone calls, though? Oh, he does it. Somehow or another, he does it. But that is illegal. Yeah, but you got C.D. Smith over there who's right in the little pockets, too, over at Bell South. Huh. Wow. So, I mean, it's just, it's just I'm telling you, I, I've seen it work. Seen him, seen him operate. I know how he operates. And Percy will say, do it, but don't tell me about it. Do it, but don't tell me about it. Yeah. You never seen Richie during the campaign. Right. You didn't see Richie. Richie was doing all the dirty work behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. He had pictures of uh, Markham. He had everything on Markham. He had everything on Markham's mom and daddy. But Richie worked behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. All that election stuff. The county supervisors don't want anything to do with Richie McAllister. Yeah. Donna Jill Johnson don't want anything to do with Richie McAllister. They cannot work with him. Right. So, I'm telling you, I've been gone for six months, and I, man, I feel so relieved. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I bet, yeah. But uh, retirement's nice, huh? Oh, it is. <laughs> it is. It's real nice. Y'all send me $60,000 a year to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> so, Not a bad deal at all. Yep. But if ever, anything's going on that you want to know about, you know, I've, I still have inside tracks. And I, mm-hmm. like I say, I was on the inside with the mayor for all the years. Right. I know what's going on. But Richie, do not trust him because I'm telling you, he's after you right now. Yeah. Okay. But you see how he operates. I know you noticed that, how he did the other night when he wouldn't say anything about Kevin, uh, Kevin Locke or something. Yeah, I mean, I had him backed in a corner, and um, let me ask you this about e- about emails because I'm aware, you know, the public can ask for um, through the Freedom of Information Act for the mayor's emails or anyone's emails really, and uh-huh. so there was an email exchange I had with the mayor um, where he was trying to claim that I crossed professional lines by going to animal control for instance and asking them directly a few questions and he actually he made a a claim in the email that just wasn't true about um a citation that had been given to someone and so i had someone go and request the emails because i knew it wasn't true and then i go in my emails the other day to to like confirm again what date that was, what date and time, and the email is gone. It's just deleted. <laughs> now, I, I took screenshots of it, but that information can't be really gone forever, can it? I mean, it's got to be yeah. on a database somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's still, it's still on um, It's on a backup disk at City Hall. Okay. He got IT to do that. Richie did real quick because he goes over to the mayor's emails every morning. He checks the mayor's emails. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, and the mayor probably didn't write that email. It was probably reached. And I figured that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, but but every 
every email you get, you, you need to save it, save it, especially if it comes from Richie. Yeah. This person ain't real good at that, but Richie's the best. Yeah, back in January, I guess before they had started to, um, before, before we both started distancing ourselves from each other, <coughs> um, they printed out a series of email, a series of emails um, that took place just before David Whitaker retired or resigned rather um, and they printed that and showed it to me with I think the intention of leading me to believe that there was nothing that I should worry about or nothing for me to look into but of course I, I went on and, and I did my due diligence and found where you know the numbers just didn't really add up for our cash reserves I was kind of wondering what you what your um, perspective on you know the whole um, David Whitaker resigning situation well, was. David went to the mayor and said, "Mayor, I'm leaving in January." The mayor says, "Okay, you know you don't need to and stuff like that." And then the next day, the mayor called him in there and told him, "Don't wait till January. Leave right now." Now, who authorized David? David wouldn't have done any of that unless somebody authorized him to spend additional monies. Right. No way, David, because David didn't know enough about it. <coughs> now, the fire chief spent $600,000 more than he had last year in the budget. Mm -hmm. How do you spend 600000 more than you have in the budget? And David had to find the money somewhere. The police department went way over. Mm -hmm. They put some money in Velma Young that, you know, come up short and leave money in that. Right. Uh, did David Whitaker do anything you wasn't supposed to do? Absolutely not. Did Richie direct him to do stuff and the mayor direct him to do stuff? Yes. David Whitaker would never have done it on his own. He had Brandy, the auditor, who sat right beside him the whole time. Mm -hmm. So uh, David only did what he was told to do. And Richie might have done emails like he wanted. Yeah, and that's what that, that's what my impression was. Um but it's still, it's amazing because it's still been uh, unexplained to this day that basically in our cash reserves, we should have around $4 million at a time when we had only $1.9 million. Like if you add up the expenses over revenue and subtract that from our cash reserves year by year from 2015 uh -huh. to present, there's a literal $2 million that's not accounted for. Well, you know, y'all took your money out of the water fund. Right, so that was, was even before that. Oh, it was before that? Yeah, so there's, even before taking the money from the water fund to the general fund, there's still a $2 million hole. Well, I mean, if I was a council member, I'd be asking them questions because y'all are responsible for all the money. Yeah, my and concern... And that y'all do every month. Yeah. It's... Yeah, I know to watch that carefully at this point. Um, but my concern is that, one, I'm not going to have the support on the council to actually have an audit uh, requested. Two, who who would we even go to for the audit? Because I can't imagine that the accounting firm that does our audits annually would be the appropriate firm to do that. And three, if it gets tabled or if it doesn't happen quick enough, wouldn't that open up the possibility that they could go back and try to cover them, their, their tracks, you know, um, in yes. the meantime? Yes, they can cover their tracks. But why can't you call for an audit? George won't go along with that. I heard you call Whitaker and talk to Whitaker about it. Yeah. And Whitaker told you didn't, there didn't need to be an audit. Well, I basically asked him, if I was going to do an audit, where would I? Where would he suggest I look? And it was a little more complicated than that, but basically he told me which reports to go and ask for and things like that. And so that's how I came to the conclusion that there's $2 million missing, or unaccounted for, unaccounted for. And um, I could call for an audit, but I don't think George would go along with that. Would Kim and Fanny? I think now, if, if you got... If you got if you got Kim and Fanny go along with you, yeah. there's no way that the mayor would veto it. That's right. that'd make him look guilty as everything. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I could probably make that work, but what would you suggest about the accounting firm, though, to do the audit? I mean, I, it, it would just be my impression that 
I think uh, Brazil Saunders is the ones who. Yeah, that do it. we've had probably for twenty years. You know, they're just looking at the same old numbers, the same old faces. You know. Yeah. I believe I'd, I'd believe I'd bid out a new accounting firm, a local one, maybe Ray Shaw Griffin or Stewart. Right. So send it out for bids that way. I would. Yeah. I would, because I mean, they've been with us, Brazil, and all them. He does that same old stuff every year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes and sense. You know, yeah, so, I mean, that's what I would do. I would call for an audit. Yeah. Probably should have done that when y'all first went into office. Yeah, probably so, except I don't think any of us really, or at least the new council members didn't have a clue at the time. Yeah. Well, maybe you and Fanny can do it, you know, when y'all become, she becomes president, vice president, because, like I say, I don't think that Percy would try to veto it. Yeah, I don't think that so would either. Be, that'd be political suicide for him. Right. Hmm. Okay. But you know, Richie, he got rid of Buck, too. Yeah. He called, it, he called it the EQ on Buck. <coughs> right. Yeah, I knew. And then, and all that stuff. And hmm. uh, Joe Norwood, I talked to him the other day, and, you know, he's working out the golf course part-time. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Joe was working out there part-time, so he got some of his people from the county. They needed some dirt out there to fill up some holes there on the fairway. So he got the county to come out there and bring some dirt out there. Richie showed up out there was taking pictures of it. Wow. And he and he said, Joe told me, he said, Richie, I'm just trying to help the city out with some dirt and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's just the way and, he operates, it, though. It, Joe was so mad, he didn't know what to do. Yeah. Wow. Huh. All right. Well, yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to me about all this. Um, obviously, a lot's been going on. Well, when I seen you the other night, I said, well, uh, Weston done finally figured Richie out. Done finally. It took him a little while, but he finally figured him out. Yeah, it was more of a waiting game. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I knew what Richie was doing. He gave me that car and the phone and everything. He was setting your butt up, what he was doing. Oh, they didn't give me a phone. But they, yeah, they, they did. I, I could tell they had set me up with the car. But the thing is, it was an administrative decision. So if they were ever going to do anything about it, it was really going to come back on them. Yeah, yeah, but Richie, Richie was looking at some way they'll get you with that. Yeah, I figured. So, I mean, whatever you do, just be careful. And if you're out somewhere, kind of look around, see if you see in them black vehicles falling in your room. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, when I'm downtown, that's, that happens. Yeah, and then you got, um, oh, what's the detective in police department, Arrington. That's who Richie uses a lot. And he has all his second and third vehicles sitting in the parking garage that he uses to check on people. What's the, what does that yeah. guy look like? Do I? Arrington. What's what, what does he look like? He's kind of an older guy, got a beard, black-headed. But he will follow you around. He's got a red hmm. Jeep, Cherokee, and some kind of older car that sits on the second and third floor parking garage. Okay. That Richie sent, he sends him out. Richie sends him out to check on people in that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll be on the lookout for that. I mean, it's, it sounds like Russian spies, but I'm telling you, that's the way Richie operates. Yeah. Yeah. You, you ask Kim. Kim's seen some of it. <coughs> yeah, I'm sure. But he'll, he'll send Ayrton out to check on you, see what you're doing, or he'll send Twin out. Mm -hmm. Twin got them windows so tinted. Right. You know, so it's just espionage. It's unbelievable. It really but you is. be careful. Will do best I can. If I hear something, I'll let you know what's going on. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I can put my number in there now so you have it. You can call me. Will do. All right. Thank you. All right, Wes. All right. Okay. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.